Hey guys, I have been a challenger player for the last four sets and there was recently a B patch I know in my last flex guide about one day after I released it. The B patch happened and basically everything changed so this thing needs to be updated and here will be the brand new flex guide that you guys could follow. So one big change in the B patch was the hacker breakpoint got increased from two units to three. You can't just play hacker anymore from just having two units in and a lot of the admins got omega nerfed as well. So Warwick, one of the dominant comps in the last patch, is no longer as good. The most broken trait in the current patch right now is Oxforce. Uh, the main reason is because Oxforce currently counters the other meta comp, which is Anima Squad. Misfortune has a really hard time dealing with the Oxforce units because if she ults an Oxforce unit, she just gets stuck on them. And the combination of the resistances that Oxforce gives combined with the built-in shielding and the healing that the Oxford units have make them really hard to deal with. So right now, a lot of AP comms are viable, but unfortunately for AD, some are playable, but you have to be in a very specific spot to play them, which just means that uh, playing AP is definitely way more flexible than AD in this patch. Basically, there are a few Exodia comps. You have Reroll Kaisa, Oxforce TF slash Nico Duo Carry, if you get a Star Guardian plus one, Vertical Star Guardian is really good this patch, along with Anima Squad plus one. There are a lot of different viable comps as well. However, you need to be in a certain spot to play them. Draven is still playable, but only from a very certain spot. Reroll Vex is not as good as last patch, but still pretty good if you have managed to hit three star Vex and three star Malphite. Renegade Jin is a high roll comp. You need to be able to hit everything, but he can do well if you manage to hit. Warwick is playable, but definitely way weaker than last patch. I would not suggest playing him unless you literally are in this perfect spot to play him. Samira, you could basically only play from an underground opener or a high roll early game infinite team opener. And that's basically it for the comps of this patch. Without further ado, I'll get right into the comp guide. So the first comp I'll be covering is going to be Ox Force Spellslingers. So this comp is really strong for a few reasons. The first reason is that the Ox Force trait combined with the units make the units really tanky because Alistar and Fiora have built-in healing and Annie also has a built-in shield and Vigo just does a lot of damage for how tanky Ox Force makes him. So the other reason why this comp is really strong is because this comp is a comp that could stabilize at level 7 from only having one copy of TF. As long as you have the perfect items for TF, which is Shiv plus 2. So for example, you go Shiv, GS, Gunblade, Shiv, GS, Gwinsu's, Shiv, Hodge, JG. As long as you have Shiv, uh, Shiv is TF's best item, you will be stable at level 7, assuming that your front line is decent enough. So this is your level 7 board, and then once you push 8, you have two different variations you can play into. One variation involves uh, something like this. If you hit the Janna and Syndra, your board will probably look something like this, and you dual carry the TF and the Nico. So if you have the a lot of attack speed items, you itemize the TF. If you have a lot of AP slash Shoujin, you could itemize the Nico. If you happen to get a Spellslinger plus 1, you can play towards the 6 Spellslinger variant, in which case your board might look something like this. And finally, if you have an Oxforce plus one, you could probably consider dropping the Viego for something like an Echo and Oxforcing the Echo. An Oxforce plus one uh, isn't actually that good late game because it doesn't let you hit any new breakpoints. But if you manage to hit Oxforce plus two, you usually go top two at least because your team just becomes unkillable. So the next comp I'll be covering in this guide is going to be Reroll Kaisa. So in set 8.5, Reroll Kaisa is going to be a bit different from how you played it in set 8. In set 8, you usually played it with threats. In set 8.5, right now, uh, the most viable way to play around Kaisa is going to be if you manage to hit the hero augment hold the line for Rel. So basically, if you hit hold the line on at 2-1, you usually, if you have a shit board, you can 5 lose into 3-2 and then roll down for a board like this to stabilize. But if you have managed to hit a really strong board early, you could streak into playing a Reroll Kaisa as well. So at level 6, you want to roll down for a board that looks something like this. You want to slow roll at level 6 because you want to hit a 3-star rel. And then once you're close to hitting the 3-star rel or you manage to hit it, you can push level 7 and then slow roll for a 3-star Kaisa. These two units are the only units that really matter in this comp. The other units like Shen, Nyla are all just fluff. Uh, if you manage to hit like 3-star Nyla, great. But honestly, the only units that really matter are just rel and Kaisa. So later on, when you want to cap out your board, you usually swap out this shitter for uh, an Echo and Ezreal for Misfortune. So your board will eventually look something like this. 
uh, if you manage to hit Morgana 3 star, Morgana 3 star is a very strong unit in this comp as well. So items for Kai'Sa is very similar to last set. It's going to be Shiv GS plus one. And then Rel items, you want to, you really want to prioritize uh, tank items on Rel because your hero augment is going to be playing around um, a three star Rel. So the next comp is going to be vertical star guardians. You only want to play towards this comp if you get a star guardian plus one. Otherwise you usually are better off just playing towards uh, Ox Force TF instead. But if you do get the plus one at level seven, you have the opportunity to roll for a six star guardian mid game board like this, and you will be very stable until level eight. Eventually you want to move the star guardian spat over onto MF because she is the best user of the spat. She really benefits a lot from the mana. And if you notice, since she's a quick draw, it synergizes very well with Kai'Sa who is also both a star guardian and a quick draw as well. So if you notice in this comp, uh, it seems like this comp lacks a front line. You do want uh, to prioritize tank items on your Echo, but the other uh, source of your front line is actually going to come from Syndra from having uh, Shojin and Gwinsu's on her because she will just constantly throw in uh, tanky units into your uh, board, especially since you have eight Star Guardian constantly regenerating mana for her. Next comp is going to be Anima Squad. This comp is really strong if you manage to hit three Anima Squad at two one because you could start instantly farming fame because that fame scales really well into both the early, mid, and late game because the more fame you have early game, the more fame you will farm late game because you'll have more base HP on your entire team. So one key indicator that you should play towards Anima is, for example, if you get an Anima Squad emblem very early or if you get a vein drop very early, a Jinx or a Riven, this means that you'll be able to hit three Anima Squad very easily early game. At level seven, there are a few boards you should roll down for. If you're playing around MF, you can roll down for a board like this. Uh, this is a very stable board that can get you level eight and will farm you infinite stacks at stage four. If you're playing around the vein, you can roll down for a board like this. This is assuming that you don't have any AP items for Misfortune. Later on, you just put any leftover AP items you find, but otherwise you generally want to play around the vein mid game because you do need to farm fame. So you have to play around whatever uh, items you have to start scaling as soon as possible. So finally, if you get an Anima plus one, at level eight, your board might look something like this. Usually I like putting the Anima squad on something like a two-star Belveth if you hit, or an Urgot or a Fiddlesticks. Eventually though, even though you do have the Anima plus one, you usually do want to drop out of your shitter Anima squad units like Nasus and Silas for better units late game. So the last AP comp I'll be covering is going to be Reroll Vex, you only want to play around Reroll Vex if you get a Mascot plus one, or if you get Rock Solid for Malphite, or if you get the Vex Hero Augment that gives your entire team AP every time they cast. So the Mascot plus one is very important. The reason why is because this enables you to hit six Mascot at level seven if you manage to find three Rift Walker. Uh, the, if you don't have uh, the Mascot plus one, it relies on you hitting Nunu, which is basically impossible for you to find at level seven. And if you have to push level eight, you probably will not be able to hit the three star Vex anyway, which is why the Mascot plus one is so crucial. So at level seven, you roll down for a board like this, and you generally want to go for three star uh, Vex and Malphite. These two are going to be the most important. If you don't have enough money to hit the Vex and the Malphite, know when to give up on the Alistar because really the Alistar really isn't that important. You really only need one strong mascot unit to hold your tank items because all the other mascot units are just fodder for strengthening up your main one anyway. For Vex items, Vex really likes blue buff plus two and Malphite could just use any generic uh, triple AP items or triple tank items. And if you manage to hit Morgana three star, Morgana is generally just a really strong three-star rerollable threat unit and she helps you shred so you don't have to build shiv or spark so the first ad comp i'm going to be covering in this guide is going to be renegade Jin. so Jin is actually a comp that has one of the most high caps in the entire game right now the only problem with Jin is that Jin has a lot more difficulty stabilizing at level seven compared to comps like tf because tf comps they just stabilize with one copy of tf as opposed to Jin you need to be able to hit a lot of different things to have a stable board to even contest the TF boards. So this ends up making Jin a level eight board that you have to roll for. So at level eight, the core units for Jin are going to be the three Riftwalker units like Jin, uh, Vex and Pike. And two other units you want to roll for are going to be Alistar and Viego. This will allow you to hit three Riftwalker two Ox Force, two Mascot, and three Renegade, as long as you Riftwalker your Jin, 
And the other units in the level eight board are going to be primarily flex. You just put in whatever you two star. For example, random two star Morgana is really good because it treads. Random two star Aatrox is really tanky. You do lack some frontline in this comp. Random Aesol is also really good as well. But eventually you do want to cap out your board with full legendary units because the strength of Jin is the late game of this comp. So your board will eventually look something like this. I would not consider playing around five Renegade unless you hit the Leona. Otherwise, you're just playing too many dead uh, shitter Renegade units. But if you do manage to hit the Leona, you could consider uh, playing around five Renegade by taking in something like a Camille and Rift Walkering your Jin to be able to hit the five Renegade breakpoint. Otherwise, your most capped board will look something like this with fully legendary units. So the next AD comp I'll be covering is going to be Samira. So Samira is still not one of the strong comps in the current patch. However, in the right spot, you can play into Samira, you can top 4 with Samira, and you can actually win games with Samira because Samira does have a high cap because you do play around a legendary unit, Ezreal. So uh, for Samira, there are two main openers that you can play into Samira from. One opener is an underground opener in which you can cash out with uh, three heists, then you can play for Samira. The other opener you can play into Samira is if you get a very cracked infinite team early game opener in which you can win streak all the way until stage four. That way you have enough HP and econ to roll down for a fully capped uh, Samira board at level eight. So if you do manage to get uh, to level eight with a Samira board, there are two main variations you want to play into. One variation involves five infinite team. So if you notice the other sure shot units in set 8.5 are going to be Ezreal and Sivir, both infinite team units. This easily lets you play into the three infinite team breakpoint as long as you have a Shen and you have the option of playing into five in infinite team if you manage to hit Pantheon and TF. And you just flex around any other frontline units because this uh, team comp lacks a lot of frontline. The items you put on Samira are basically the same and you just put any leftover items on Ezreal once you find him. The other variation of Samir you could play involves playing around mech instead. So in the other variation, your ward might look something like this. You have mech Garen with your typical mech uh, tank items. You have three infinite team with Sivir, Ezreal, and Shen. And you have a random legendary unit like probably Urga or Fiddle along with Samira. So the last comp I'll be covering in this guide is going to be Duelists. So Duelists have always been a pretty consistent comp in the last few uh, patches, even in last set. I think Duelists are a little bit weaker in the current patch just because um, Ox Forest currently exists in the meta. I do think that Duelists are still playable, but you should probably only play Duelists if you get a Duelist plus one, because the eight Duelist power spike is actually very strong. So typically, again, Duelists is mainly a tempo comp. You want to take advantage of power spiking at stages that other comps don't. For example, the main strength of Duelists is going to be the early and mid game. And the other comps that are meta right now don't typically spike until stage four or five. So for Duelists, if you have like a four Duelists opener and a lot of lockets, you want to play around the fact that you're going to win the entirety of stage two, three, and four. This means that you're going to have to aggressively roll at stage three, two, and four, one to try to win every single fight. You should be high enough HP by stage five to slowly bleed out to a third or a fourth. The win con for Duelists, you could actually take home games with Duelists, but it's reliant on you high rolling a vein three with spread shot. If you do, this is typically the itemization you want to go for. Otherwise you could just uh, roll to zero every turn at level seven or eight and try to bleed out until a third or a fourth. So this sums up my flex guide for patch 13.6 B. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or found this guide helpful, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel or followed me on Twitch. And I will see you guys next time.